Hello and welcome to the Boss Stewards Inquiry podcast. Uh, my name is Lee Keyes and I am hosting tonight in Catherine Fry's absence. I'm told she back, will be back in the next episode, though I think John has some more information on that. Um, as always, I'm joined by John Ling of John, John Joe's Blogspot on Facebook and I really suggest that uh, you drop by there some quality crack and his bets are always worth a check. Uh, a very shrewd judge is John. So basically give that a check. And also don't forget my website, systembet.co.uk, for some rather military medium betting advice. Uh, I'd like to kick this off, first of all, by saying uh, I think we'd all, we all like to pay our respects to the uh, uh, to Prince Khalid Abdullah, uh, who sadly passed away this week, uh, a pioneer of the uh, breeding uh, and owner world. Um, he's been around since I... I started my, my, my betting life and it's, it's going to be awfully sad if the Juddermont operations can't continue um, uh, because of, uh, of, his, of his passing so that, that, that remains to be seen uh, and it, as I say it, 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 it is pivotal what, what he has achieved the, the kind of horses he's had through his hands um, produced um, and it's a very very sad week I think for racing um, there will be more discussed um, on that topic also um, on a new uh, podcast we've got on Sunday uh, where we'll be uh, myself, John and Catherine uh, we'll be discussing the hot topics in a nice punchy 30 minute savage podcast each week so I hope you'll tune in to that. Now John I think you have some information of why Catherine uh, isn't able to make this uh, show today. Yeah, yes it, it just in the last quarter of an hour or so, it's come to light that uh, sadly the Fry family who sat up past the bedtime for no reason this week, the Gloucester Glamour Puss isn't with her <laughs> because she's gone to a sleepover at Simon Clancy's. She was seen leaving the house wearing a Hurricane Fly onesie and I'm, I'm reliably informed that the keys are going in the fishbowl at 9.30pm exactly tonight. <laughs> ah, that's absolutely brilliant, uh, <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say to that, but brilliant, John, as always. Um, right, questions time. We'll kick off with questions. We've not got that many this week. Um, was it? Um, is it Tim Jenkins or is it Tom Jenkins? Tom. Tom Jenkins. Sorry, sorry, Tom. Um, started on the gin too early. Um, he's got three good questions, and the first one of them uh, is: Do you bet on any other sports or just horses, John? I do, but it's very, very rare I would have a real serious bet on anything else. Um, for example, if Middles were playing my local team, I would tend to have a correct score bet, especially if they were on the telly. Uh, and that correct score that would be based around Borough Nil, <laughs> which is what I actually call the team. Um, again, with the potentially anticlimactic England matches as well, um, I love a good nil-nil on a live TV international. Um, if there's a snooker player that particularly takes me fancy, I don't mind having a, having a bet there. Um, I don't bet so much on the darts these days as I did in the 80s and 90s. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't roll anything out, you know, especially if I'm going to watch it, you know, I don't mind having a little tickle at it, but I, I wouldn't be having a monkey on anything like that, like that you know. I think, I think that's that's the problem with, with, with sport betting. That, and I think most people, well, professional punters that I know, uh, well, it, it, they have to have a bet to watch it. You know, it's just literally if it's golf, if it's you know Masters, if it's uh, football, whatever. There's always, there's always everyone I speak to uh, on my chat medium, they're all having a little little dabble usually. You, you couldn't um, watch the Masters without having a bet, couldn't you? Because if somebody that you even gave a remote to squeak to one, say forty to one or something like that. 
you would literally take a fortnight to get over it, the, the fact that you hadn't had 20 quid each way on him, wouldn't you, you know? Oh, even, oh for like, sure. Even yeah. though it's not even going to tilt the balance sheet at the end of the year. Yeah. It would just annoy the living shit out of you that you'd not had anything on. <laughs> well, when I, when I read this question, I, I thought, I thought, well, that's funny. Because I, I checked my profit and loss on, on Betfair yeah. um, uh, yesterday. And, like, over the last three months. And I have done my absolute bollocks on sport. I, I have I've lost. Um, I'm not going to say, but it it literally, it literally shows you that if you don't keep a track of your of your profit, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I don't bet big on sport or anything like that. These are just like like you said, watching bets. Oh, this, uh, live football on or, or cricket on or golf. I, I, I'm an awful sports better. Absolutely awful. And clearly, the bottom line also says that. Right. Uh, second question uh, from Tom. Um, the best one out of the three as well, this one. This is a cracker. Corker, this one. Um, if you could lock down four people within racing permanently, who would it be and why? John. Well, I thought this was a tremendous question. Um, apart from the fact that he was limiting us to four people, um, I did have a, pro- I did, I did, did have a pro- problem whittling this down to a semi-final lineup. But anyway, I think I've, I've probably got somewhere near with this. Um, number one, an absolute banker for the lockdown would be the screaming kilt. I mean, he genuinely thinks he's a good trainer. He's got the personality of Jad. Most shit if you go up there for a morning on the gallops. Um, Rations coffee like it was liquid gold and thinks we tell this team biscuits are enough to cover a freezing morning on the high mower. Um, just could not be having him anywhere other than locked up and locked down permanently. Um, <laughs> Crack it, chap. Num- number two, um, I'm, I'm afraid this is uh, a double look for this lad. Two weeks on the spin, poor old Becky Johnson. Um, I take the view that we're unlikely to ever have to fight another Crimean war. So taking horses to fall like they did at Balaclava is no longer required. So we'll uh, we'll have Decky under lock and key as well. Um, the third choice would be a little bit controversial. Uh, I know some people in racing like him. You can probably get them all in a phone box, but there is some people that like him. And that would be Splat Chapman. Um, total sellout for me. Right? Lazy award pieces in the sun. Um, for me, just likes to feel quid man. He likes the sport. Um, and the fourth one would be Rod Street from G. R. or whatever the hell it's called in Selfish Week, Great British Racing or whatever. No, Racing <laughs> How the hell he ever got his face under the table is beyond me. Got the sort of marketing strategy that would have sent Woolies and BHS over the cliff sooner than they actually went. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that's me for, you know. I mean, I could have easily doubled it, trebled it, or whatever, you know. There's yeah, a- I, I, I mean, I mean that's not a bad sport to have. I mean, they, I get, I get everything about them. And the, the the point you make about Matt Chapman is, and I've always looked at Matt Chapman and thought, you know. This, this, a while ago, you know, this, this lad isn't too bad. He, he's, he's up and coming. He, he's sort of like a trying to be a McCreary type, if you like, um, that sort of style. But obviously, not got McCreary's uh, knowledge and panache at delivering. Uh, but, but like you say, lately there's, there's something slightly changing. I, I think it, I, I get that. that. That's the kind of thing I got as well. There's a smearing posh boy lurking under the surface there. Yeah, I think, think I think you've got a point there. Um, okay, right, mine then. Uh, John will be disappointed because, like he says, we we know enough people in racing to probably have a scroll full. Um, the the, the prob- problem for me would probably be liable. Um, so I'm going to name three that I could comfortably name without uh, possibly going into reasonings that uh, you know might get me in trouble. Um, so first of all. Uh, my top one uh, is uh, Joe Fanning. Um, I mean, he, his, wife, he, his wife must really hate Joe. I mean, she's making him ride it, or his partner. I don't know his personal life, by the way. But, but 
I mean, he's riding at 73 years old. I mean, you know, he, he, everyone's sick of it by now. You know, we know what's coming in the final furlong. And you have to sit there and suffer as, as you see the old uh, flapping motion, you know, that's the reason nicknamed Flapper Joe. Um, and I, I think, come on, Joe, give everyone a break. You know, <laughs> just just announce it. Just say, I've had enough. Thank, thanks for coming. Uh, so Joe will be my first one. Uh, my second one was a recent thing, really. Uh, I mean, I've, I've never liked 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 the fella, but the the, the commentator Mark Johnson, um, the, the the shouty man, he, I think he's reaching new heights. He's done several commentaries recently where, you know, he's going to have a heart attack if he carries on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, he's going to fall off his chair and just and that because he must be he must be absolutely blood red in the face with, with Mark Johnson. And I mean. The, Every every commentary is getting towards the same, where it's sort of like a monotone voice, a monotone shouty voice, and then it turns into a angry shouting voice in the last sort of two hundred yards. And and it's and when you hear the racing replays on on the racing TV in the background, and you think, oh, it's not him, and you have to literally either mute it or turn it over. And that's not that 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 shows that that commentary is terrible. Because why would you do that? You you know, it's 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 grating, it's annoying, and Really, uh, someone needs to have a word with him and say, just, just turn it down a bit. You, you know, you can call a race. You don't have to, uh, you know, have a coroner. But anyway, so that's... Uh, he, he, he's that's, getting to the sort of age as well where he, he genuinely could have a funny term, isn't he? You know, I mean... Well, I mean, he, he's eating well. I mean, you know... Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, you couldn't roll it out, like. Right? No, no, it's, uh, you know, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, so Mark Johnson... Johnson. So we've got the Johnston and the Johnston, really. Yeah. Uh, my, my third one, uh, I say, I'm not going to do four because I'd possibly get myself in trouble. But the third one, I can give you a personal account of, and I'm allowed to do so. It was back in uh, December 2004, New Year's Eve, and it was the first horse I owned called Keep Me Warm. And the fellow in question rode my horse, Paul Durr. Um, now, I'm not saying he's still in racing. I don't know what he's doing at the moment. Um, but I, I, this was probably my most embarrassing moment. I'm filling the sound at Wolverhampton, stood next to Bill Turner. The horse misses the brake. Um, it, it comes wide into the straight. It gets hand riding, absolutely no effort from the saddle. Um, Bill looks at me. I looked at Bill because Bill knew what I did for a living. So Bill's got the suspicious eyes looking at me, staring at me, and Bill would shoot you. You know, he's one of them. He's, He's an angry man. So he he said, um, he said, he stopped that. I said, hmm, doesn't look good, does it? And next minute, Bill got called into the steward's room. Uh, Paul Burr got called into the steward's room. I was unaware the horse drifted from sort of like fours to tens. And you can check on the racing first site. It's all, all there. The stewards inquired. Uh, it was the most disgraceful stop job I've seen. Um, I rang Paul afterwards to remonstrate and said, um, what went wrong there? And he, he just claimed he was ill. And and you knew straight away he was absolutely, he, he was telling complete lies. Um, and so basically, Bill wouldn't speak to me after that. Bill refused because he thought I was in on it and I'd been laying on bet fair. Um, and <laughs> so I had to sell the horse because the trainer won't speak to you. He just, that's it. So literally, we just ran in claimers and I got the horse claimed and uh, it went to uh, Paul Blockley at the time um, and never ran again. So I don't know why I'm there. But anyway, so, yeah, so Paul Durr, yeah, took it right up me. Well, Blockley and Lorraine, it, weren't he? Well, like I said, he, he, I mean, he was probably in weird dodgy crowd was the jockey and, you know, nothing I could do. Yeah. But, I mean, and that is the truth. I mean, people would look at that and say, "Yeah, right," but <laughs> yeah, and say, "Yeah, you've been you've been taking lumps out of the machine." But no, that wasn't the case. I was actually there at, at Wolves, stood next to Bill, uh, wanting wanting to cheer it on. Uh, but no, not today. Right. Uh, thanks for them uh, questions, Tom. Um, uh, re- uh, the lockdown questions was very good. Um, oh, hang on, no, one more. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm wanting to get to the races. Uh, just one more. Question from Tom, which again I thought was good. Uh, if you were a racehorse, who would you want to train and ride you, John? Well, then <laughs> one of the 
most renowned laziest bastards in the north of England. Um, <laughs> I would be going for John Wainwright to train me and Tim Tinkler to ride me. Because they would never ever get to the bottom of me. Um, that that would be my school of thought there. I would be able to duck the issue no matter what they applied. Blink as dry as a face, you name it. They would get an out out of me. <laughs> Do you know what? What's funny is that we're thinking on pretty similar lines, really. I, the first thing I thought to that question was, like, well, I, I would if I was a racehorse, I'd be incredibly lazy. You know, I'd be just absolutely, you know, unwilling. Um, and uh, the, the two that I thought of was um, uh, uh, Jim Bolger, <laughs> because I'm I'm sadistic like that. Uh, you know, and um, and to, and to ride it would be, uh, I think Megan Nichol would be a shout. You know, better eye candy there. Well, yeah. you know, uh, be, be a wash down after. You know, things like that. I'd, I'd quite like that. And then and then nasty Jim. You know, and I'd probably be laughing as a horse really with nasty Jim pulling his stable staff off and bollocking his jockeys. And, you yeah. know, Jim would be sending it to church every Sunday till you get out there. <laughs> anyway, thanks, thanks for the question, Tom. It's made an entertaining start to today's show. Um, on to business. Um, this is where we need to pick up a little bit because I I, I I hold my hands up. I've stopped Catherine tipping 25 to 1 winners. I've, I've not pulled any trees up myself. And I think this is the week me and John have got to take this weekend to account. So we moved to Warwick on Saturday. And the first race we're going to look at is on ITV4. That's the 150 at Warwick. That's the Hampton Novices Chase. Just the three runners, uh, decimated field. Uh, John, any views on the 150 at Warwick? I was, I was a little bit disappointed that if Cat 6 wasn't declared for this because I just think it will help the price for pumpkin heads off. Um, and I think if the Cat 6 happens to be a shell of a horse at the minute, over fences, and yeah. it would have just nudged pumpkin heads out there at the half a point or whatever it's over. It really just made it that little bit easier to back. Um, I don't think there's one with better credentials in this, and also, I'm of the opinion that what it down that side before they come into the street, I think it takes a bit of jumping, they come up pretty quick, them fences. Yeah, it's just, and uh, yeah. I, th- I think the old Dick Chink method of schooling uh, also was in good stead on tracks like that, because um, they do seem to get their act together when when they, when they jump in hard and fast, you know, and they, they do sort of rush up on them a bit on that. I I think that's a that's a pretty solid art in that to be honest. It, I don't know, it's not splitting the atoms as there, that, but I'd be really surprised if it got right. Yeah, um, I concur with that, actually. Uh, I did, I mean, Fiddler on the Roof, uh, Catherine has pointed out to me that um, John Joe O'Neill, a, a junior, takes over, and obviously that's a, that's a big jockey upgrade, and I, I concur with that. Um, and that is Catherine's selection. Um for those of you that follow the only national hunters we've got. Um, <laughs> we have to be really careful when we go in these, don't we? Well, that's it. I have to sort of, you know, uh, refrain from um, uh, dissing uh, our premier national hunt judge. And Catherine is very keen on Fiddler on the Roof, primarily because she doesn't like Lobby Power. Um, and John Joe O'Neill, obviously, I agree, is a significant jockey upgrade. That said, I'm not sure I've been that impressed with Fiddler on the Roof. Um, what should we say? How do we say it? Attitude, maybe just not putting it in. Something wrong. I mean, it got beat at Newbury by Caribbean Boy, um, and then it ran against Alar, which I, I tipped Alar that day, and I, I did I did back Alar significantly. But the thing for me that day, Alar was not perfect at all. It, it, it didn't jump well, and it still brushed this aside. Um, fairly, fairly comfortably in the end. I went some big prices in winning that day. It did, it did, yeah, a double figure. Um, you know, and and that's the thing. 
for me, I was disappointed that I expected Fiddler on the Roof to beat Allard in, in running. There's no way I was backing Allard anyway. Um, so Fiddler on the Roof was, I thought it was disappointing that day, but I get Catherine's angle. Um, but I'm in your camp that I think next destination will possibly be, uh, a little hard to beat. But as I said, uh, Catherine likes Fiddler on the Roof. So, so sorry, we're, we're all split. It's good that you're using Fiddler on the Roof for positive mention because we don't want to be paid to the other way when the postman's sack was throbbing, never mind bulging. With irate letters from Fry fanboys. <laughs> the Fry fanboys were very upset. That that was that you know. I mean, putting putting her off the the big winner of Christmas. You know, the 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 big headline uh, stealer. You know, and I I I've had a fair bit of stick for that. Um. So yeah. So so it's fiddler on the roof for Catherine, and it's next destination for me and John. So sorry, we're we're split there. We. In, in the, in the three runners. Um, the next race on the card there is the 225. That's the Ballymore Leamington novices hurdle. Um, it's now a grade two event. Um, John, any thoughts in this? Yeah, well, I, I actually, uh, took a bit of the first one last night, um, off to the lead. Um, I think this is just a very solid poker each way. Um, Despite being an out nature of Thorne for the Tizard Yard, I think uh, this has got Thorne in the bank to would pretty much make it up with anything in the race. Also, possibly unusually for an Oscar, it uh, she probably wouldn't mind how the ground got. You know, if it, if it was really bad ground, I think this one would cope fine. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I'm, I like the jockey booking as well. Um, you know, somebody up there that's going places. Um, it's it's a tough race, but I think that's a very very solid H way park. I think you've summed it up nicely there with the uh, with the tough race. Um, and your selection's been very. I've been very impressive. Uh, I've been impressed with it. Uh, they've definitely not got to the bottom of him at no. the moment. And like you said, the, the jockey's a big positive, so he's definitely a live one. Um, my thoughts on the race, well, I did a little, little bit of a statistical digging, um, and I looked at the last 16 runnings of this contest. I know, I've got too much time. Um, no horse has ever managed to win this race in, in, 16, in the last 16 runnings that I've got on record when they step up from two miles for the first time. Uh, I, pre- I presume that's because it's the two mile five. It's probably be a slog, um, you know. And I, I, I find that 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 a remarkable stat that 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 basically uh, twenty two have tried as well. So there's been twenty two horses over the last sixteen years try to make the step up from two miles, two miles five, and they 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 don't they don't manage it. Um, so yeah, that, that you've got the fruity layers now, aren't you? Well, no, no, no. I mean. <laughs> I'm not going to go to that. You know what? I, I think about these ten-year trends at Char. You know, they're there to be. But it's just a statistic. I mean, whether it's logical, this could be. You know, it may be just a thing that possibly you need to have run at the distance before you race here to make sure you get home. Uh, maybe that's something in it. I don't know, but it's interesting to that. Um, mm-hmm. And for that reason, and I, I do like your horse. I'll be honest. Um, but for that reason, I just thought I'd take a chance on the. Uh, 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 Alan King's at uh, JBY. He was he was very impressive um, over course and distance. Now that form would not be good enough to win this race. It's probably about a stone short of where you need to be to be winning this this kind of race. It didn't However, it didn't know, did it? well, I thought I thought the key thing with this last time JBY was the fact that. They went slow early, like really slow, and this mm-hmm. this was out the back, and you know, and it didn't half come through and power through in the end. I thought yeah. that's impressive to do it off such such slow fractions, really. Um, after looking at some of the timing data, um, so I thought, well, that that's not a bad shout. And if you look at the point form, the point form's quite solid as well. So mm-hmm. I just thought I'd take a chance uh, on JBY around. I think you can get a bit of eights, bit of sevens. That's a bit under pressure, but I felt maybe that each way so. Alan King Kong. Uh, I'm not going to bad shows as early because I definitely think it can jump better than it did there. Yeah, 
Uh, I think there's more to come, but it would have to. I mean, we thought, you, you're back in a horse here that definitely has to improve, I would say, around the stone mm. to, to, to match what the, what some of the other principles have. So that's our two there. There's nothing from Catherine in this one. Um, so we shall move on swiftly to the next race, which is the big race of the day at, at Warwick. That's the uh, classic handicap chase over three miles five, an absolute Stamina fest. Uh, it'll be very tacky ground there. Um, and basically, you have to stay the trip well to be winning on Saturday. John, thoughts on this? Well, as you say, Lee, you have to stay the trip really well in order to be uh, even considering yourself to have a half a chance in this. And uh, with that in mind, I'm throwing one in that's stepping up massively in trip. <laughs> we haven't said that he was real stay or not um, <laughs> Didero Vallis uh, regular listeners will be quite familiar with the fact that uh, I, I sort of half fancied this for the Seston at, uh, entry back at the start of December and after dispassionately observing it shall we say and shouting at the screen for Charlie Dutch to kick him into the fences a bit and all the rest of it. I concluded that this horse is jumping and come under pressure due to the fact that it was running over two short a trip. And I am of the opinion that this is exactly what it wants. Maybe not exactly what it wants, because I thought exactly what it wants. It was the Welsh National last week and she didn't declare it. But here we are, um, Charlie Dutch's jump ship, which I'm not so bothered about, we've got more than able deputy in Tom school, um, we're right down the bottom of the handicap, 10 stone on his back, so if he does stay, he'll be alright at the end of the race, you know, I mean, I, I think when it, when it gets tested, I'd, I'd obviously I'd have 10 stone and 11 third. Um, it, it's it's kind of a hunch thing, but I do think at eight years old it's likely this. It's got potential. It, it could turn in, still into a, a tip-top staying chaser. A lot of these have sort of had the chance of being tip-top staying chasers and haven't quite made it. Yeah. You know, whereas this one could. It's 20 to 1, I think that's more than sporting. Um, obviously, she's got the other one, I'm going to see how many Charlie Dutch has had the choice, but um, I'm sticking with this. I'm racking Charlie Dutch with thick beer at the minute and saying he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, like you say, there is there is something there if uh, Didero Vallis can stay this, stay this distance. Um, and I mean, it has been competitive off this, off, off, off this sort of mark uh, and, and above um, in some good races, um, like you've highlighted. Um, and this race would not be as strong as the renewal last year for me. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think I think you 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 got to shout there. Um, Catherine has been on to me and she said that she liked. Uh, Le Bruy in this of Ben Pauling's yard uh, ran in the race last year um, finished um, fifth uh, behind Kimberlite Candy last year's winner it was a warmer race last year Kimberlite Candy won the race the conditional was in fourth um, it really opposes with Captain Chaos uh, 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 from last year uh, that was second in the race um, but Catherine seems to like uh, Lebroy in this, um, and she thinks off a mark. And I, I can see where she's coming from. 148 ran in this race off last year. Uh, it's off 140 this, this this time. So and and had a nice third over the national fences last time out. So comes in 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 in, in fairly good nick. You would think so. A nice selection there from. Uh, a is, premium. Is this, is this a horse we're starting to get pissed off with, like? It, well, it, it's getting beat 20 odd lengths, no matter what market runs up. Well, uh, oh, and yeah. And still some disappointing finishing efforts for me. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think I think the key there could be uh, it's had its wind patterned up, um, <laughs> and public. I might have had more wind ups, but publicly, this is the first time they've declared a wind up. Um, so, you know, six weeks off. I can see why. I can definitely see why Catherine likes it. And the market. I've actually said the last year uh, with the um, the automatic bet stamp riding it, Jeremy Todd. Uh, and everything looked to be going to plan until we actually actually have to start racing. You know, and as, as you would say, I think the wind off is clearly going to be the key. If um, if that works, you know, I mean, I'll bet for off, but yeah. as, as it's been running, I mean, I would just expect it to wait and turn it in, you know. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, be interested in that one. A um, few angles there for Catherine that could see LeBroy um, lift the classic tomorrow. Um, my selection is Captain Chaos. It's a bit boring, and I'm not recommending it as sort of a, a massive value player or anything. But it's it, it's more obvious than Dale Winton that this is this has been laid out, you know, for this race. You, you can see last year Skelton did exactly the same. Uh, it was pulled up um, uh, behind Potter's Corner in in the uh, the Welsh National. Um, possibly, possibly wasn't that bothered, and then all of a sudden turns up absolutely hammered in the market last year uh, from sort of thirty threes in the morning right down to ten to one, um, and ran a blinder and finished second. And I think this will be out and away, which is again if you're playing running like I do, you know you. It's nice to have a, a runner that's, that's bounced out in front, jumping nice. You know, it's it, 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 it's good um, from, from a trading aspect. So, Captain Chaos, I felt, you know, he's, he's got the form with LeBroy from last year. Like I said, second and fifth in the race last year. So, I did feel that uh, Captain Chaos would go well. Uh, final race at Warwick we're looking at is the 335 race. Uh, again on ITV4 it's the Potemps handicap hurdle where everyone's playing uh, silly buggers uh, trying to finish not too close uh, well the ones that have got big enough marks are as we know everyone lays them out for the final um, and uh, John your thoughts for the Potemps uh, I mean these races are just absolute hell on a stick aren't they really <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, what the hell is going on, seriously? Um, I've left uh, the skelly wag. Um, fell at the first, I think, last time I was in that chair to ask us. Here we are now, we've got 137. Now, what's his plan here? Is he, is he going to go further in the rest of the season, try and get it in the final of this, or is he having a little pop around to get his confidence back? Yeah. What's going on there for starters? You know, um, you look at the marks some of these have got, you would think, well, pretty much they can also have to compete off these marks. I can also see a situation where not many of these would fancy going to Cheltenham with another pound on the back. Um, with that in mind, <laughs> um, I sort of started looking down the bottom, thinking, well, then we can maybe just hard to go up and either the, the bottom of the handicap than the top. Um, I rolled out SP on because there's some hurdles involved. Uh, Mr. Harper wasn't so keen on either. I thought that was pretty much at the top of that, that one's capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I, I've ended up I, I thought St. Delina was maybe a little bit unlucky last time possibly I'm not a big fan of Ned you don't know me as a Ned as a car park um, <laughs> but I, I think the, the profile is quite right for this type of test it's like these French friends in bad ground I think the arse will stay well. I think it'll be off for its life. There's a claimer on getting the side pound off. 
I Tom Buckley, yeah, he's, he's very good. Very good. You know, I, I, I think this will run well. Um, Charlie Long's done his team, he usually well finished by, well, he's usually turned out at draft by the time Chelsea comes out now. So, you know, this, this could be Fez, maybe. Well, interested, because um, th- we're on the same wavelength then, in a way, um, because obviously, as you'll know, you've gone for St. Delina and I like said some good reasons. Uh, I've gone for Mr. Harp. Well, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Harp was the one that, this is my best bet of the day, and this is the one that beat St. Delina um, uh, last time out. And the interesting thing for me, obviously, St. Delina was running there with no penalty. Uh, for the winning the conditionals race time before, and Mr. Harp gave him three that day um, and a beating, and now they race off their uh, level weights um, of the same same mark, um, and not not just because of that, because I did look at Mr. Harp's profile, and his he, his his pedigree is absolutely stamina laden. Um, He's not had any chances really in novice hurdles, and the novice hurdles he ran in uh, for his mark uh, were against uh, Barbados Bucks, which obviously was very impressive at Kempton the other week. Yeah. Um, and they were steadily run races, which wouldn't have suited Barbados Bucks, but it certainly didn't suit this fellow. And then he turns, and I probably underestimated him against St. Delina. I thought, well, he looks a bit slow as this lad, but then I looked at the pace sheets and they didn't go much much speed in either of the solo races. So basically, this lad's not had a real test of stamina yet. And the St. Delina race was, was certainly more well run. Um, and and I think, and he came through really, really strong at the finish. And I think there was a, a lot more there under the bonnet. Um, I, I, that's the feeling I got. And I backed St. Delina that day. I thought St. Delina was a good thing. Um, and, and, I, and this fellow just absolutely put uh, St. Delina in a place um, and I think there's loads more to come. This would be a strong nap for me. Um, 11 or 12 to 1 is enormous. Each way a pleasure. You know for a fact it's trying because it's on the mark 123. Uh, anything down the bottom is going to be trying. The, the ones at the top, maybe not so much, as we know. From You know, anything sort of 138 ish <laughs> might not be bothered. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Um, I told him this is it? Uh, but I think you're on the right lines with St. I think it's the right race. I mean, we've just got a different opinion between us on who's going to come out on top between them. But I think I, I do think these these two both of them, obviously if Mr. Hart runs well. You think St. Delina's going to run well? So, so yeah. So I, I like I like that. I like that. Um, well, yeah, that's my nap anyway. Uh, would be uh, Mr. Hart. Um, last but not least. Uh, we're going to move on to um, any business we've got for Saturday. John, have you any other uh, bets lurking under the bonnet? Yes, I've got a couple of quality looking ones at Warwick actually in the earlier races. Lovely, lovely. Um, in the 12.40, um, have a look at these at the far day stage actually, and uh, I was rather disappointed initially that Burn Sun Dust hadn't been declared because. I've, I've sort of been waiting for the horse to come out on some bad ground on what I think is a fair mark. Anyway, I haven't declared it, so I had to have a bit of a day think. And I had a look at Childa Pecos, which is fairly trashed down in the ratings. And I, th- I think it's on a fair mark now. It'll just be a bit of a choice of part. Um, I can't really see how this won't run well tomorrow. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I fancy that quite a bit, maybe. And the, uh, the 115, the, uh, the Edward Courage Cup, you know, that's the old Spanish steps owner. Um, now there's, there's two ways of looking at this. There's, there's every chance that Generous Day is dead. But if they haven't quite buried the rotting corpse yet, and we're getting back on his face, he's on a tremendous mark. And he would definitely have to come into calculations rather than believe he joins outside of the field, which I think he is. Um, so that technically would be a Henry Oliver H-way double. Now, he's, 
If you turn around a bit of a yard to have a few years ago then, I suppose there's still time for him to still become a noteworthy national hunt trainer. Like in the same way there's still time for me to become a noteworthy model for speedos. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, but yeah, he's uh, he, he's got fair chances of landing a double tomorrow. And if he if he didn't land a place double tomorrow, I'd be uh, I'd be worried about poor Henry's future, and he he could be the next man for the lockdown. <laughs> I tell you, what, I like I like the profiles of the pair of them. Generous days dropped a lot in the weight. Um, like I say, a, a very backable price would be very capable uh, on his day and. The first one uh, was a 140,000 euro purchase as a three-year-old uh, 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 for Willie Mullins. And, and, uh, There's like a fair bit of money he says that Henry Oliver can train. Yeah. yeah. You know, Definitely. Not a cheap muck in the yard. And uh, one day he might just prove the investors are correct. Very interesting, John. No, I, I can't knock those selections at all. I think I think you know you, you could see big runs from either really. Uh, certainly, uh, one could be very well handicapped with generous day, and the other one is a bit of an unknown quantity having slipped down the weights after. The what could have been. Yeah, the, the absolutely. Medical. Yeah, I've, I've got nothing really to add apart from two thirty-five Linkfield um, horse called Thurlas, trained by George Boffey. Um, it's twenty to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not telling you anything. I mean, I'm. You know, I'm, yeah, absolutely nothing here because twenty to one in the thing. It's eleven to four now overnight. The rats have been in. Um, but Fulas has got a lot uh, in hand. I am told. Uh, I am told this is an absolute steering job. Um, so we can use that way. You know, I mean, it's information. We know what information is. Do we really want to take three to one? When everyone else else has had twenties, but I suppose if it does go off, uh, if it drifts back out, it might be worth a small bet maybe for last. But anyway, that's what I've been told. It's amazing, um, it's amazing the difference a tongue tie can make, isn't it? Ah, oh, it's nuts and hay, and you know, yeah. all sorts of other things. <laughs> it's amazing stuff, you know. I mean, yeah. Uh, anybody would think it's just like wrapping our lattice tight around its job and. You're using it as an excuse when they have you in, but obviously we know different. Yeah. Well said. Um, Sunday, uh, there's one race that I, I was going to mention, and uh, just as I mentioned, 120 Punches Town. It's the uh, Moscow Flyer, uh, Novice Hurdle, a Grade Two event. Uh, John, did you get a chance to look at this race? Or have any thoughts on it? I did. It's an absolute epic, isn't it? Um, yes. Yeah. You, you know, I mean. Where, where do you start with these? <laughs> uh, I think, um, on the whole, um, e- even like the baby girls are so fire attack, um, on the figures, that's probably got enough in, in the bank to give it a bit of a squeak, even though it was probably disappointing last time. Um, the Mullins are would fall in the could be anything category again at Patty. Um for the fragrant Mrs. Donnelly. Um his other one, you know, I mean again comes out, or is up who knows, you, you know, I mean the potential by the barrel board in this, isn't there? You know, I mean so, something's gonna Shake up the Cheltenham market if it wins with authority in this, isn't it? So. Absolutely. And um, I was thinking, I was hoping, a kitchen fitter, uh, the real deal. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 the super unleaded might be going in tomorrow. And, you know, I mean, he, he often talks, he wants JP to buy, buy a horse off him, you know, he wants, he, and is the super unleaded in tomorrow, on Sunday rather. Um, and it was ever so impressive. I know it was a, a really rubbish handicap hurdle, and it was running a poor time, but for me that was more eye-catching because he came right from the back off a crawl, and he just he walked past them as if they were just literally trees without coming off the bridle. So, I mean, this, could, this, this is hilarious, isn't it? I mean, uh, this, this could go to the Fez 
having doubled its rating from, from the 19th of September, you know, like, yeah. when I was 84 there, for Christ's sake, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, you're going to be 150 if it wins this tomorrow. And I, I know Catherine sat there, like, if she's listening to this, if she will be, I know she's, like, cheering on what I'm saying here. She'll, she'll be cheering rather than on for the crack, I think. You know, the real deal, I think, would be hilarious if that was a winner. And uh, I don't think it's any forlorn hope either. I think there's something okay. about this hope. Whether it's, yeah, whether it's, whether it's, uh, from Super Unleaded or whether it's from, uh, Nuts and Hay, we'll never know. But hey, you know, it, it's an interesting race, I think, to watch on Sunday. That's the Moscow player at Punchestown. I'll work round off by saying that we've got a new show every week now. Um, it's the, um, the Bar Stewards. Sunday sermon. Uh, five hot topics of the week we'll be discussing in just 30 minutes. Perfect for a dog walk or anything really. Uh, no censorship, ranting away. And it's our first episode this Sunday, so please tune in. We've got five fantastic topics. Uh, and get your questions and uh, questions in, please. Uh, we'll also uh, deal with those um, uh, as we usually do. Uh, Makes for a fun show, uh, readers' questions, and we do appreciate uh, the feedback also. So, yes, yeah, so tune in Sunday for the first episode of the Bastards Sunday Sermon. Thanks for listening this week, and good luck with your punting this weekend, and hopefully we'll see you on one or two winners. That's all from us. Bye for now.